Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Because you are, because your parents were, et cetera, et cetera. And the good news is, so is the rest of the world. If the rest of the world was like me, you wasted your money. No amount of money could you be taught how to compete. Because people that, for example, Sparta, the Spartans, nobody could compete against them. Notwithstanding that 300 of them died, like schmucks, uh, you know, in that movie. Um, but the rest of the world are cunts. That's why 97.5% or 97.6% of the people that take the super success test fail. Because 97.5% uh, uh, wouldn't do anything when you spit in your mom's face which I can't even hardly get the words out of my mouth. Uh, th that's true, but it is true. So all you got to do is step, as I told you uh, the first day, get 5% as good as my communication skills, you're a billionaire. Flat fucking guarantee. Most of you, on a scale from 1 to 100, are minus 50. You're not even 1. But so is the rest of the world. And when you put the bankers and the uh, motivated sellers and the uh, accountants and the lawyers and the uh, potential board members on their back foot, that'll be your first step. You know how when, uh, what's his name, landed in 1969 on the moon? One small step for man, uh, whatever he said. Okay, That's, that'll be you for the first time. For now, the guys, like last night you saw, you know, love doesn't mean shit, which I, I knew, I, I've known that since I'm eight, nine years old. You still think it means shit. If I knew, let's say 10, let's say 10, not eight, nine. Let's say since I'm 10 years old, so for 64 years I know, I've known love doesn't mean dick. And you just discovered it last night when you saw the movie. Now, have, is it because I've lived in a cave? No, not hardly. But we're a product of our social and economic milieu. That's fancy for we're, uh, we're a product of uh, uh, where we came from and where we've lived. That's what we're a product of. And your parents are a product. And blah, 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 blah. That's why, and I said yesterday, it's so hard, not impossible, it's so fucking hard to break the poverty cycle. In certain areas of the world, which I've already alluded to, like Harlem and uh, uh, in New York, has begun to do that because now it's fashionable to be in Harlem. Of course, Clinton's offices, their foundation offices are there. Um, what, uh, what, um, what's the bottom line on old Nick? From last night. What's the bottom line on Nick? Other than he can't remember who his eight wives were. And I, by the way, full disclosure, I've never met him in person, but I've talked. I've tried to get him to do a deal. Not a deal deal, but I mean, uh, so we do a joint appearance or me to get him here. And he's a cantankerous old fuck, you know. The, uh, as he sounds, he's even worse in person on the phone. Um, so uh, I have had some exposure to the, the guy. What about Nick? He makes decisions quickly and never dwells. In the past. He only has one love. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. All he cares about uh, is You can say the same thing about every son of a bitch we're going to talk. So, but if I had, I gave you a movie for the rest of your life, you're still not going to get it. You should have gotten that by now. I can show you this, the, the same guys. There's a thousand of those guys. There's a million of those guys. They're all rich. He's an asshole. Correct. 
Well, the only asshole that's broke. Huh? The only asshole that was broke. Yeah, well, no, well, he's, but he, no his, his students aren't broke. He's broke because he, he, he made a bad deal when he sold off to IMG or whatever the name well, of that company is. He didn't care. He didn't want it anyway. Yeah, well, that's what they all say. All poor people say they don't care. And all people that lost their money say they don't care. They're crazy. That's bullshit. Because they don't have a plan. Yeah, yeah. Everybody that had a lot of money that lost it cares, believe me. Okay. We got, we got a few people in this room that ostensibly had a lot of money at one time and now have some money, but they care that they lost that money. Believe me. What else about Nick? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one thing he said was he didn't have the knowledge, but he had the leadership. Stop, stop. That's what you don't get. And that's what you don't believe. Nobody believes it that comes through here. And that's why most of you fail. I mean, fail to be a billionaire. See, if you're not a billionaire, you failed in my eyes. Those are the only, just like Nick, those are the only guys I keep track of. The 187 uh, world champions he's got or whatever the number was. Yeah, those are the only ones I keep track of. I remember their names. I'm not going to know your fucking name tomorrow. No, next week. Tomorrow I will because you're still here. Next week I'm not going to know your fucking name. The world only remembers winners, or because Hitler was a winner. As I said before, he was killing the wrong people. Romas. He was killing fucking Romas. <laughs> you, you squeeze through somehow, your family. You have to go there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, um, but the, the point that the uh, young lady made, he didn't know shit. No matter, I, I could have a seminar from now till Christmas and you won't believe that. Because if that's true, as I suggested, then why are you where you are today if you don't have to know shit to be a billionaire? Why? Poor role models, blah, 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 blah. Okay? That's why. But you don't have to know shit. And the more you know about the industry, the less likely you're going to be a billionaire. I used to tell people, nobody wanted to hear it, I didn't know that oil and gas came up the same hole. Oil and gas come up the same hole, then there's a separator on top, and you separate, but I thought it came up two holes for 10 years, no, seven years. And we had the fastest growing energy company on the planet for eight years in a row. And the founders were, none of us were oil and gas guys. Accountant, lawyer, me. Now I'm an oil, I know a lot. Now I know enough. No, no, that's too risky, I would say. And certain things that I did before. No, fuck. That's a one in 20 shot. I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't, there's a saying in this country, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I mean, and I probably wouldn't have made all that money. I was asked at Harvard, at the Harvard Club in 1993, first time I spoke there, and they said, uh, November 93, and they said, uh, balls or brains, Mr. Penny, what do you attribute your wealth to? Balls or brains. And, I, and at that time, I misquoted, I said 50-50, which isn't true. 90-10. 90, 90 balls, 10 brains. Now it's really 99-1, really. 99-1. Because I always knew, even when I didn't have any money, I could make, I was going to make money. It was just a matter of time. You know, being poor is a permanent, being broke is temporary. I always knew. And then once I made, started making money, I always knew I could make it back again because I made it. It was easy. It was easy for me. And once you think making money is easy, then your decision-making process is like this. And it's a numbers game. And if you're stepping up to the plate and you're swinging, eventually the, the bat is going to connect with the ball and it's going out of the stadium. About Nick. What else about Nick? Yes, ma'am. Um, he broke the rules of taking the kids from their parents to their academy. We had a kid in the last seminar that was at the camp there. Nick, he was a child prodigy from South America, and he was, um, he was, he was, he was co coached there by Nick. And he just, he cried during the movie. I wasn't there listening to the movie, but the guys, he cried because it was just, it just brought back bad memories. Now, the, if he had been super successful, it wouldn't have been, you know, but he, he was one of the, he was a great athlete, but he was an also man vis-a-vis -vis being a world champion. He wasn't a world champion. 
And many of you subconsciously or sub rosa, as psychiatrists say, have made sure that you distance yourself from world class people because you don't want to be compared to world class people because down deep inside, you know, you're not world class i.e. you find people that are like you and you chill, hang, or whatever those words are with people that are like you. And that's why I say the biggest speed bump, to me, it's the Mount Everest speed bump, is that when you go after board members that you can't pick people like you. You cannot. That's why I tell you, you're not going to put anybody on your board that you know. Nobody. No relatives, no goombas, no ah, Nobody. These are... I say white, not because they're white. These are white-faced people, strangers that you don't know. Could be black, whatever the color is, but. What else? Yeah, and he can't play tennis, which is remarkable. Not to me, it's not, but. passion and enthusiasm. And I'm told, of course, now, when that movie was two, three years ago, um, when he was young, um, he was just a psychopath. He still, now he sounds like a used up psychopath. But when he was young, he was just, you know, hit the players, which is my style, actually. The Bobby Knight. Uh, uh, Woody Hayes, for those of you that are old enough to remember the old football coach of Ohio State, one of the great football coaches of all time, a real hard ass. Uh, they're playing Vanderbilt, Ohio State. And Vanderbilt didn't have a, such a great football team. And um, uh, it was in the fourth quarter, and they were uh, tied, I believe. And uh, a um, halfback got around the outside corner and was running down the field to make a touchdown. And as legend, not legend, but reality has it, he's standing there with his clipboard, and this is in the clipboard days, and it, with the headsets on his headset, like, and he's seeing the guy, the Vanderbilt guy, running down the sideline. He throws his clipboard down, he takes his headset off like this, and he tackles him himself. To be beat by Vanderbilt in those days was an ins insulting to uh, the number one or two or three rank uh, U.S. football team. That was the end of his football career. Ohio State, the chances of whoever fired him. He never got another job doing anything. There's some things worth dying for. And to him, the old man, to have a Vanderbilt pussy cunt outrun his defense and score was more than Woody Hayes could take. So he fucking tackled him himself. To the roar of the Ohio State side, by the way. And he never worked again. They canceled his pension because they had an embarrassment clause. Remember I talked about embarrassment clause? He walked away from Ohio State with not a fucking quarter. And he knew that when he was going to tackle the guy. You'd be spreadsheeting it. I wonder what they're going to do. Are they going to fire me? What else about Nick? Yes, sir. He ruthlessly focused on winners, and whenever he felt like somebody didn't have the potential to do that, he went on to the next person. Correct. No matter what. It's a number. Well, even coaching is a numbers game. Coach, yeah, but he had a pool, a universe of ostensibly stars, and he made them superstars. Believe in making mistakes when necessary to get to the top? Well, I mean, you have the. <clears throat> He, well, he didn't care. He, he, he didn't think. He knew he was right. But he, he had that same attitude when he started coaching 40 years ago. He just reacted. He pulled the trigger. And that's why you just fucking do it. It's pulling the trigger. The kids that have been the most successful with the QLA program are people that pull the trigger the most. Pull the trigger the most. He believed the mental power. Well, it is. Uh, uh, your, your success and your failure between your ears. He's a life coach. Well, no, uh, no, no, no. Life coach, it means something else today. Life, life coach is... That's all horse shit. I've never meditated a thousandth of a... I'm not going to embarrass you because I don't want to know. I took the question off the, your forms because I don't want to know. I, I'm embarrassed for you if you meditate. I'm in fucking embarrassed. So I don't ask the question anymore because I spent too much time during the seminar beating on you. But I have not meditated one hundred millionth of a second my whole motherfucking life. 
I think it's jerking off. At least jerk off, you get something in your hand if you do it right. Or on me on the ceiling. <laughs> boom! <laughs> boom! Boom! My old car that I used to drive around when I was 16 years old has stains on the roof. <laughs> now I'm telling you how it is. You wish that you had put those fucking stains up there. I had a thing called a cum rag in my glove box. And one day I'm taking my mother to the store and my mother opened up a guff compartment and says, what is this? Mama, put that back in there. <laughs> I mean, this is how it is. I mean, this ain't the fucking fire walk. What else? Yes, sir. He created a competitive environment for people in which he, they fought for his attention. They competed with each other and he created more energy and more drive for them. Yeah, and uh, I liken this to, you know, people say, uh, uh, what kid do you love most? And you know, I love all my kids the same. But that's a fucking lie. We all know that's a, that is a, that is the biggest fucking lie there ever was. You don't love all your kids the same. You know it in your heart. This one's a loser. This one's a loser. And this one's good. A winner. Yes. But we all, I don't say that. Uh, um, it's, uh, because, it, well, me of all people, I'm not going to say I love them because I don't. But you treat, and inadvertently, on a subconscious level, you treat people differently. That You treat people with, you have respect for differently than people that you don't have respect for. And the same as coaching. Uh, they used to call it teacher's p uh, favorite, teacher's pet. Well, I was never the teacher's pet going, going to school. And I was never the teacher's favorite. Um, but you treat them differently. And that's all the more reason why you need to pick, you, you must, it's an absolute. And there's not many absolutes in QLA because you can make a lot of mistakes on almost every level. But it's an absolute that you pick people that are not you. Now, every once in a while, every four or five years, I get an alpha male leadership fucking bulldozer come through. And, um, but that hasn't been the case for a long time. But uh, then you can pick people like you. Then it's tough because remember, we pick people on the board, as I've said, the lady yesterday, uh, that uh, supplement, or compliment, I should say, compliment uh, your uh, weaknesses. Well, in your particular case, you almost all have, you have no strengths. You got virtually no, you know, no strengths. It's in not just you, but the kids in YouTube and the kids that come to the seminar, they have maybe, let's, let's say that we break down into 10 traits. I'm not saying that 10 is the number. We've got, we do ten, all 10 bad, poorly, and we do seven of them real badly. Real badly. So you focus on the three that you don't, you're not the worst in, and you make those better, and the other seven that you, comp, you supplement and or complement with your board members. But, I mean, you guys and gals are uh, dealing with a clean piece of paper because you don't have that many strengths. Now, and it's just the antithesis. You've been told you're good at this, you're good at this, you're good at, good compared to who, whom, what? Compared to the person that's telling you? Well, I already know who's telling you. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. First seven, eight years of life, uh, your uh, self-esteem is built. We know that that's, that's normally family members. So, but unless um, uh, Joe Lewis, if I was boxing, unless Joe Lewis told me that you look pretty good in the ring, you know, that's like one of you telling me I'm pretty good in the ring. That means shit. Joe Lewis, yeah. It's like um, I attempted to play baseball. I, I was, uh, I'll tell you off camera, why my one base, remember I told you about my football career? Well, I've got a similar uh, happening in my baseball career. But uh, I, would, I would go hire Ted Williams, the, the only guy, the last guy to finish a uh, full season batting over 400. He bat 406, I believe, his last year in professional baseball for the so uh, Red Sox, I believe. Uh, I'd go hire him to be my batting coach. Um, and that's why, unfortunately, the people that, the gurus, and, and there are some gurus out there that are worth a shit, but for the most part, they attract so many because they attract people that are like them. Weak. What else, anything else about Nick? Yes, sir. Uh, he said if he was emotional, he never would have made it. And that's why, see, I don't have breakfast with you, I don't have lunch with you. I, 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 I don't even want to have dinner with you. But Sally says I, that's too antisocial. 
So I, she, she makes me. I don't have dinner with you. I don't give a fuck. Because you're just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a bullet in most of your heads. Or as they say where I come, I'm going to put a cap in your ass. And I know it. No matter how hard you try. Boom. Because you're not going to follow the steps. You make it easy for me. We're talking about um, arguably the finest tennis coach that ever was. Has more champions. Nick Boletari. Uh He's 88 or 86 or 89 now. Um, he sold his company out 20, 25 years ago to the big management company uh, that um, also manages a lot of the golf pros, baseball pros, etc. cetera. Um, and um, as I said, I ranted and raved yesterday, if religion and, and, and love got the job done, you wouldn't be here. Well, he just focuses on love. Uh, I don't think he talks about religion, but um, he focuses on love because it doesn't get the job done. But I find it ironic. People send their kids there at the formative ages to an old psychopath that only believes in one thing, winning. So some parents have, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Some parents want to do the right thing. They know they're not capable of the right thing. So they farm the kids off. But only ki- parents with money can farm the kids off. So most kids get left at the starting blocks because their parents don't have the money to send them to one of those schools, which is expensive. The same thing with the best prep schools, which our children went to in the world. In the world, uh, But everybody that was in those schools, with one or two exceptions because they gave one or two scholarships, their parents were filthy fucking rich. Otherwise, you can't go to those schools. It's not dissimilar for the highest priced expensive schools like University of Pennsylvania that I spoke at a few weeks ago. But there's a lot of scholarships now. And now you can get in with student loans. But back in the day when Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and Penn were founded, back in the 1700s, um, early 1800s, they didn't have those scholarships. So then only the real rich kids went because they were the only ones that could afford it. Okay, you had a comment. Yes, sir. So Nick's quote, in life, if you don't go through wrong, you'll never reach the top of the mountain, which in QLA would result in pushing through reject, rejection in order to get to our success. Yeah. Now, when you think about it, you can sum up the obstacles that you're, it, between your ears you're going to have down to one word. Now, not, not fear we've already talked about. One word, rejection. Because that's what the fear manifests itself in is the rejection. If nobody rejected you in the QLA process and it was just, you know, two plus two, blah, 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 it'd be a slam dunk, right? We, we know that. So it's really down to rejection. Rejection transcends the fear of failure. Because when you fail, normally only you know that you fail. And that's why you set, I don't, but most people set low standards so they can get over the bar. When we talk about goals, uh, for the first, uh, I'm stealing my thunder from day after tomorrow. We set goals that we can't achieve in our lifetime. There are no limits. There's no amount of zeros at the end, and it's as fast as humanly possible. Most of the things that you've learned about goal setting is time frame. It's not by accident that I got super wealthy on my 39th birthday. In the back of my mind, I always said I, I had to do it before I was 40. I had to do it before. And I, I was already worth 15, 20 million bucks. Then I lost it. <laughs> That's what the oil business can do for you. <laughs> I lost it. And so then I started over again. Um, the, uh, but I hadn't even realized I had lost it until I saw the accounts, my accounts meaning my numbers, the financials, from the year before. Fuck, I didn't know I lost $23 million last year. Where did it go? Well, $5 million, a dry hole, it's pretty easy to go through 23 million bucks. Um, I mean, it's, it's bloody easy. You wake up in the morning and they say, yeah, it's another, another duster. I used to hate that word, duster. I haven't heard that. In fact, I haven't repeated that word. In, I mean, this is the first time in 10, 15 years. Duster means nothing. Most people that go in the oil and gas business can't find enough in, in oil in the oil and gas business called grease. 
not enough grease to put on your hair. You know how you put brill cream on your hair? Well, I don't know if they still use brill cream. Whatever you put the, and now they, 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 they slop it on so your hair's back, like the Goomba Brothers. I mean, you know, straight back like that. Okay. And, 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 but uh, the uh, duster. Um, but, uh, but I didn't know. What else about Nick? Yes, sir. He viewed uh, greatness as an endless pursuit and never went back to default. All pretty much sounds the same. Somebody suggested uh, a year or two ago that I put on, on a line, an in the endless loop, I think is the terminology, um, about one psychopath after another psychopath after another psychopath, and uh, see, somebody, a producer, um, asked me, uh, could we have one a day? I said, fuck, we could have 10 a day on the loop. Meaning, are there more than 365 of these guys and gals? Fuck, yes. I mean, we could put 10. We could put 3,650 on an endless loop, telling their story, being assholes. I mean, yeah, but I mean, so I said, there's no problem coming up with 360 of them. Shit. I can come off the, almost the top of my head with 360. But most of the people in the seminar don't know all the guys that I know. And I don't read a, two books a day. I don't read any books. I haven't read a book in five years. When I want to feel good and cry, I read my own book. Damn, that shit's good. Fuck. <laughs> uh, how good could I be? <laughs> okay, what else about Nick? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. When he caught Andre Agassi, and he had a baby with one of his favorite, and he sent a letter, did he get all the people call him? Or? I, I, to me, that's chicken shit. But anyway, uh, uh, and by the way, we're going to talk, we spend 30 minutes on how to fire people tomorrow. There's a right way and there's many, many wrong ways. But it's not by text. It's not, you know, none of that shit. I mean, it's eyeball to eyeball. Um, now, the interesting thing part about Nick is that he has produced many, 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 many superstars using the same psycho methodology that hasn't really changed in 30, 40 years. People ask me, why am I hard? It works. Fear works. Even though it's a shitty, as I said yesterday, it's a shitty way to run a railroad. It works. But not for everybody because most people break. We had a couple more um, resignation emails this morning. Not nobody in here, but I mean, from the last seminar five weeks ago. When you see the Zoom call, first Zoom call won't have 24, but let's just say you're all there. 24 plus me is 25. The second Zoom call will have 12 or 13. And uh, the lowest we've ever had is six. Six. What happens to them? Who cares? Thank you. Thank you. But, but it's better if it comes from you, somebody else than me. But who fucking <laughs> cares? That's exactly right. I took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, but the... Um, uh, and remember I said yesterday uh, that uh, for those of you that unfortunately won't make it and your family's going to say... Well, at least you tried, you listened to this, that. And instead of saying, you fucking sorry cunt, get up and do it again. Because remember, you're on the bicycle with the training wheels. They take the training wheels off. You fall over on your melon head. And then normally your mother and or father or a big sister, somebody comes up and picks you up and says, oh, poor baby, poor baby. And they put the training wheels back on. Instead of kicking you in the teeth or hitting you with a car like my dad did me. Now, I'm not recommending you run over your kid. Now, don't, I don't want to hear all this shit on YouTube. Uh, that's not what I'm recommending. I'm just recommending, shows you, not recommending, shows you 
what happened to me and how I got that way. It's, they call it now tough love, which is not tough love. My dad invented tough love. I mean, the, uh, today tough love is if you raise your voice to your kid. I mean, that's not tough love. Tough love is knocking a tooth out of his mouth. Not a permanent teeth. My mother said, all the teeth I got knocked out were not permanent teeth. You get your permanent teeth, what, 12, 14, something like that? Yeah. My mother was quick to point out to our relatives, it wasn't a permanent tooth. <laughs> uh, the, um, anything else about Nick? Yes, sir. Everyone has a goal. Nick had a goal. But the plan was very poorly executed. He, he, was, he was hoping that everybody who gets to get a title would give him money. At the end, after he gets the title, yeah. we we'll kick him money to fund for his <laughs> for his academy, and that's not what happened. And virtually nobody did. Nobody did. <laughs> so his plan of execution was not good. Yeah, and I tell you, you make ten, twenty, fifty million. God be with you. Allah be with you. I never hear from you again. <coughs> uh, a second uh, um, iteration of that is a lot of the kids won't talk to you, like the ones that have filmed so far. They don't give a fuck. I'm on board, pull up the gangplank, your competition. That's it. That's what they think. Okay. So a vast majority of my successes, even though I know them and I know who they are and they keep more or less keep loose touch with me, uh, don't want to help you. I got um, two years ago when uh, we were coming up with the, the $50 billion number, maybe five, six years ago, whenever that was, I got an email, um, a registered letter from um, HSBC the vice chairman of HSBC worldwide saying that uh, our client so-and-so has asked us to put this together and it's a uh, source of funds, which uh, is uh, verify the money he had. I hadn't heard from him in many years, many, many years. He went to the seminar in 2004, I believe, four, before the mentor program, whatever. And he had uh, the, the letter and it broke down his ca- cash or cash equivalents. $841 million, the kid. Uh, not stocks, bond, uh, cash or cash equivalents. The guy had $841 million. So I assume he's got other assets, so he's probably a billionaire. I never heard from him. But he wanted me to send it in, so, you know, here's something to add to your numbers. Hadn't heard from him in years and years and years. I remember the first time I ever met him, though, uh, which was about 2000-ish. Sally and I met him at the Churchill Hotel in London. <laughs> He had grease under his fingernails from a little village in, uh, in uh, Germany. What did he do? Huh? What did he do? Uh, he, did, he did his in high tech and property. High tech and property. And um, the, um, so w- once in a while, once in a while, or if, when a guy loses $500 million, I, I normally hear from him. I wish I had contacted you three or four years ago. I went into this, went into this, uh, you know. So it's either when they hit it out of the park or they lost, they hit it out of the park and then they lost it. Then I hear from them. Then I hear from them. Anything else about Nick? He started yes, sir. when he was between 40 and 50 years old. Correct. The oldest person we've had come through the seminar that's been successful, 77 years old. Youngest, 13. 77. 77. Was there the echo? Did I say it? The, no, no, no. But you know, seventy-seven. Um, and um, we had a guy uh, three or four years ago from England who was in his late sixties. He came through. He had gotten my book in two thousand. He turned it into two hundred and sixty or two hundred and eighty million pounds. And he came to the seminar. He says because I should have been a billionaire. But I mean, he got lazy, got sloppy. He turned his businesses over to his three sons. I said, well, I, you wasted your money coming here, you know. Your three boys aren't the sweat off your balls. And uh, so uh, uh, we, we have a number of people that got the book when it first came out in the late 90s, the first book. Uh, and um, should have been, I mean, if you were following QLA from 2008 till nine, if you're not a multi-billionaire, you fucked up something bad because everything's been going your way. Interest rates, I mean, everything has gone your way. So if you were in QLA 2007-ish, 8, when the uh, supposed crash happened, I mean, you, you ought to be worth 10, 15, 20 billion bucks, or billion, not rupees and shit, but I mean, real money. 
I mean, uh, uh, no, no problem, because we got plenty of them. When, uh, one of the reasons we use $50 billion man, although we've uh, done 770 some billion, is that if I ever have to go to court to prove it, one name, one guy, 56 billion. One name, one guy, one industry, 56 billion. I rest my case, Your Honor. That's why we stay at 50 billion. So I don't have to go around because they may not want to come to court to prove that they're there. 56 million, one guy. One guy. Who doesn't talk to me? What the Queen's worth. Huh? Yeah, well, the, I, wish that I, I wish I had got a hold of the Queen's kids. The only thing that she's, she's been a perfect monarch, the only thing she ever did wrong was the kids she had. And you can't, now you ask her, do you love them all the same? Can you just imagine what Her Majesty would say? Off the record, off the phone. Off. And we've had royals here. I, uh, I've met five of the royals. Princess Di, Prince Charles, Princess Anne, the Queen, uh, her husband, her cantankerous old husband. Uh, anything else? Yes, sir. Not about Nick, but about Jim and Agassi when they had a fight, they had a match in Jim won. Even though Agassi was more talented and more... You mean Jim Courier? Yes. Okay. Uh, even though Agassi was talented and more, more well-positioned to win, he basically intimidated him and won. And had You're going to intimidate. You're going to be the less qualified person in the room. You're going to be the weak link. You will, if you're not the weak link, something's wrong with your fucking board. If you're not the weak link, you're, something's wrong. Um... The um, yet you're going to prevail because you know, as my wife would say, which buttons to push. And over time, not the first meeting you have, over time, and when you realize what your, your strong suits are, you know when to push them. Some of the kids wrongfully push them all at once and the fucking thing blows up. But, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> that's not, but you know, and there's only 25 or 30 things uh, that you need to, uh, you know. Uh, be able to say, one of which is, uh, and we said a kind of poo-pooing yesterday about banks being in the lending mode. Well, all banks aren't in the fucking lending mode. I told you, in southern Florida right now, I forget which bank it is, had a, just a $3 billion uh, health care deal blow, in the, blow up in their face. I mean, it's, so when you call the banks and you say, uh, whatever the banks are in southern Florida, uh, you know, are you in the lending mode? Are you in the health care lending mode? And then they'll, ah, they'll, ah, they'll hesitate. Not just the lending mode, because you want to know if they're lending mode in healthcare and in the vertical that you're involved in. And if they just lost $3 billion, the, the, the corporate policy was going to be, let's just take a, a deep breath and just take a look at our risk analysis of our portfolio. Because these banks, you have to remember, we're taking advantage in a legal, moral, ethical way, the fact that they have a business development budget. A business development budget. That they can lose money. They don't want to lose. They don't tell the bankers, go out and lose money. But you got to develop business. And there's so much money, and depending on how senior you are. And for example, if you're a credit officer that can sign $25 million, you're pretty senior for one guy. That's pretty goddamn senior. Normally, there's two or three guys or a committee that makes $25 million decisions. But there are bankers in the world that can make those, those kind of... Um, commercial decisions. And so they know they have to put seeds on the, on, on, the gra on the ground to grow something. So and those seeds cost money. So we're taking advantage of that. And the other reason that I like you to start at one or two million dollar deals is because it's easier to get through their, their, their system. Process. Correct. It's easier. We got guys doing, I show you 31 million, 45 million. We got guys doing that. But it's harder to get through the process. And that's why one of his deals took seven months and another deal took nine months. But he, 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 he had food on the table. His bills were paid. You know, they weren't foreclosing on his cars. We've had, it's not funny, we've had guys have their wives' cars repossessed. And I think that's funny as shit myself. And the old lady with all her bags... Uh, got a, you know, they're calling you and you're in a meeting, you're not answering your cell and, uh, and they got, you know, they don't have any money uh, to take a cab. I think that's hilarious myself. 
Like now, but, but when the guy got home and his wife standing in the fucking door with a bag, <laughs> it wasn't so fucking hilarious. <laughs> and that, that's when, don't touch me. That's when you go through, don't touch me, you know. <laughs> don't fucking, what do you mean? You know, we're going to have sex, bullshit. I walk, I walk 11 miles home. It's even better. We had one a, a number of years ago. You know, they carry kids like papooses, you know, in the front chest, the, like a vest or some shit. Uh, we had pictures. I was, uh, I roared. I, I just fucking roared. I mean, and they always repossess your wife's car, not yours. Because you're out hustling and moving around. It, it's tough to shoot a, a moving object, right? So you're out moving around and her car is just sitting there. It's fucking funny as shit. Uh, but when it happens, see, the story, it's a statistic. When it happens to your wife, it's 100%. And you suffer. And then she says, that fucking asshole Pena. It always comes back. It always comes back sooner or later to me. Um, okay, you saw, uh, in addition to Nick, you saw. Um, you're a scientist. A scientist and a mindset video. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the, my, mindset is everything. Uh, the, um, because the errors, the fear that we think we have. Uh, are all between our ears, and they're all based on how we were raised. Uh, the um, when I was uh, growing up, um, fortunately, I was in grammar school. I was the biggest kid on on the campus on the grammar school from uh, zero to seventh grade. I was the biggest kid, um, and uh, the uh, so I I never got bullied or any of that kind of thing. And kids that used to get bullied used to come to me and say, hey, Danny, Danny, you know, you're my friend, even though I didn't even know the kid's name, you know, so-and-so is bullying me. And so uh, I saw bullying from that angle. I never saw being bullied. And that's why it's very difficult, if not impossible, for me to understand how you get bullied on, on, uh, on Facebook. Don't you just either close Facebook down or delete them or whatever you call them, unlike them or whatever the fuck, block them or whatever you can do. But no, they sit there week after week, month after month, getting abused. Because they engage in self-sabotaging activity. I don't know anybody that ever committed suicide, and I don't know this for a medical fact, committed suicide because of Facebook that, that didn't have a low self-esteem. I bet all the money I have that every single suicide that has come through Facebook and bullying had a low self-esteem. Now, I'm not saying they should be dead, but I mean, high self-esteem guy, either go down there and break his jaw with a bat or just unhook him. But we've had, and if you read about it in this country, people that have been uh, subjected to abuse for three years. And then they find the daughter hanging off a banister in their fucking house. What happened? And then the police, you know, unravel the, the records, Facebook and all this shit, and she's been uh, being abused on Facebook for over three years. So we know the mindset. We don't have to uh, uh, go through that, unless, unless there's any questions or comments about the other stuff. Anything else about Nick? All you have to, excuse me, all you have to be is 10% of Nick. Now, I won't say you're a billionaire, but you're going to be a multimillionaire. 10%. And, and we, we, we keep hounding these same profiles, uh, character profiles, uh, because I know you're not going to become Jobs, an asshole, this big asshole. Uh, it's not likely you're going to become uh, the, the guy from McDonald's. It's not likely you're going to become uh, the, like Nick. Uh, not just because he, he's going to die poor unless he changes his model. Um, but to drag you from your end of the continuum. Drag you from your end of the continuum towards at least the center. A few of you are in the center now. And so then we'll drag you from the center towards my end. But remember, 98% of all the high-performance people in the world are introverts. 98% are introverts. Only 2% are extroverts, and only 10% of that 2% are loudmouth psychopaths like President Trump and myself. They're, they're regular guys. And, and so far, of the people that you've seen on screen, who, you can uh, blurt it out, who relates to anybody, if any, if at all, to the people that you've seen, the success stories we've shown? Yes, sir. Well, I do. To uh, you mean the webinars, right? Yeah, your webinar. Yeah, yes, sir. Absolutely. I mean, to who though? Whom? Uh, the French girl, and uh, also the Arab kid. Uh, I mean, all of them had something very 
I mean, I, I could relate to basically. Yeah. Yeah, bits and pieces. The, um, and you're going to see the majority of them now starting today, going through uh, the last day. Um, but it, it's like I, I sometimes I think I'm uh, working with clay or I'm, uh, I'm building an automaton or an android. We take uh, Churchill's this and we take uh, uh, the French broads this and we, uh, we, we take the gangbanger, the Vietnamese gangbanger this. And then I got a guy like, you know, like Frankenstein, you know, with bolts in his neck. And, but I mean, every one of these people have one thing in common. They're successful. I mean, that they've all got in common. And they all started this process from scratch. That's the second thing they have in common. And everybody you've seen to date, well, I mean, uh, the French girls got a few bucks. and But I mean, basically, they started this project with zero. So that pretty much covers everybody in this room. And as I told you before, um, I told of at least one or two of the interview, uh, people I saw in my office and went on one time, if you have some money, the process is even easier. But we teach you how to use the process uh, being essentially with no money, broke. Bro, yes, sir. I uh, was very impressed by uh, Jessica because she said before I left the castle, I have a schedule, connections, I picked my industries, and I knew my strengths and weaknesses. So when you leave here, she had a. Okay. Now, Jessica has some decent leadership skills. I mean, you can tell, her, I mean, it's pretty obvious the way she talks. I mean, now, to pull up and move, even though it's only 140 miles to move from Dallas to Houston, when you got teenage kids, is a big, I'm told, is a big fucking deal. Husband quits his job. Whether that's a big fucking deal or not, I don't know. Uh, but most husbands wouldn't quit their job. He's a military yeah, yeah. And, and, and as, uh, until we got some money coming in the door, then I'll quit my job. <laughs> but... You know, she might say, don't touch me. And uh, you touch me again after you quit your job and we move. I don't, I don't know how that worked. But um, it's, it's obvious that she exhibits uh, leadership skills. And, um, and she's made a lot of mistakes. She only pointed out a few of them on, on, on the webinar. Uh, and she correctly said, you know, if I'd listened to Dan 100%, she listened to me maybe 95%. And it's the 5% that you don't listen that just step on your dick and it's self-sabotaging. It just is. Because I know the 10 or 12 things that are most likely to go wrong in this model sideways. Not, not just that you don't follow the steps. That's the biggest. Guys go from step one to step five because they've got an uncle, a cousin, a brother, a best mate, a mistress that are accountants, lawyers, M&A people at Goldman Sachs, and they put their team together with people they know. It blows up. We've never, I'll put it another way. We've never had it not blow up. Because when you get all those high powered, more high performance people than you on the board, it doesn't even take them a board meeting to figure out you know, add, add no value. That not, you don't even have to get to the fucking first board meeting. And the reason I, it's the only time I'm protecting you just like when you fell off the bicycle with no trainer wheels and you hit it on your head. I'm trying to keep you from falling off the bicycle and hitting your melon head. Because I know you're the weakest link and you add no value. The value you add, which will be given no credit until you do your first deal, is you have the energy to bring them all together. So what's that worth? Fuck you. you know. We'll go hire a fucking Tony Robbins to motivate us to bring us all together. Okay? You brought them all together. You showed them the QLA, one moving part model. Commercial debt driven, which they've never done before. And they don't give any value to that until you do a deal. Well, fuck, he was right or she was right. God damn, you don't have to, I don't have to. First time I've ever done a deal, been a part of a deal where I didn't have to fucking put up a bunch of money. Then you have value. Then you become the orchestra. Player. Correct. You are, because, but, but then they realize it. Then they, they more readily accept it. And after you've done 5, 10, 15 deals, then you're the Messiah. Then, I mean, then fuck. We always knew the kid was going to make it. <laughs> we always knew that type of shit was going to make it. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, they didn't think that. And the reason why you don't want them to meet and talk behind without you being there, by the way, you attend every fucking meeting. You don't send, a, I don't care if you've got pneumonia, your wife, uh, your kid is half out of your wife's uh, uterus, you go to the fucking meeting. 
Because only bad shit happens when you're not at the meeting. What meeting? The me- well, any meeting for the accountants, the lawyers, anybody. Because you, you're going to have a guy that will say, well, I'll recruit the board for you. Fuck you. But you'll say, no, no, that, I appreciate the offer, but I'd rather be involved in all the, the minutiae at that level right now because it's, just, it's a new it's a new code. It's a new organization. You'll figure out some nicer way to say it. But if they press the issue, then you got to be harder. Remember, be firm and fair. Firm and fair. Now, firm to me is not firm to you. Firm, my firm is probably savage, you know, compared to some of the kids. Okay, YouTube, thank you.